Stream Processing, Chapter 11. We saw so far how batch jobs are handled effectively with great throughput. We went over the Hadoop ecosystem. In this video, we're going to look at how unbounded data, data that keeps coming in a website, which is a global website, you have data that keeps coming. Users are constantly shipping uh, or shopping for products, buying things on your website, acting on some of those recommendations and all of that, right? So there's going to be an unbounded stream of data that keeps coming. And so for that use case, streaming is what solves that problem. So let's look at some of the use cases where streaming systems could be used, right? These systems are developed for near real time. That's the key. Near real time processing of uh, uh, applications, right? So for example, let's say you had fraud detection. You are a credit card company. You wanted to build a fraud detection. And let's say a credit card is lost. Uh, you wanted to build some sort of a mechanism in which you can detect when someone who has stolen that credit card makes certain transactions in certain pattern and you want to block that card. That cannot wait for the next day's batch event, next day's batch job to run in Hadoop to tell you that, hey, these jobs, these credit cards were lost, but then there's already damage done. So things that require near real time alerting or near real time insights, that's when you need streaming systems. So we looked at credit card that needs to be blocked. There are also analytics and trends. Let's say week over week, you see that uh, the shopping uh, trend in your website has dropped by 50%. You, there is no holiday and you have no reason to believe that there may be some issue in the system. But if you didn't even know that, you will have to, you will have lost an entire day to find out only on the next day when the bad job runs, that hey, there was a problem all day yesterday. But what if you could know in the first minute that there's a big discrepancy? If you have a big database uh, um, system and if you have a big website, then you, you will have a lot of users to get the signal. So analytics and trends is another thing that is very good use case for streaming based systems to build on. Anomaly detection, we talked about maybe there is a software issue or maybe a computer went down. You want to be actually polling them, uh, the machines, and to find out if those machines are actually down, that you need to replace them. We went through a lot of those fault tolerance uh, situations in the previous videos. But anomaly detection also requires near real-time action. Stock market trends and trade settlements, right? You don't want someone else's order to actually go with someone else. These are all happening within split microsecond and there's uh, a seller and there's a buyer they need to match and those those matchings happen in near real time and so on and so forth even in the military let's say they wanted to build some sort of a surveillance system they don't want to wait for the whole day when a, an attack would have started just in the mid midnight right so they want to know actually in near real time so there are many use cases where you have real-time data you have unbounded set of events that keep coming and you want to act on those insights as soon as you get them and so to support this use case, what does that typical streaming system look like? This is a simple streaming system where we have a producer, a broker, and a consumer. A producer, you can think about this as a user on your website. It's producing events by acting on your website. By clicking a link, they create an event. By clicking a button, they, there's an event sent out. And these are all producers who are actually telling you with those micro actions, micro events, as to what's happening. So those are all things coming in into your system. Someone adds something to the shopping cart, uh, but they don't actually uh, you know, buy it. Then that's an event that can be captured, not in the database, because the database would only say, these are the items that were bought, but then you have insights that tell you, hey, these users actually bought some of, uh, add, wanted to add and buy these products, but didn't buy. So maybe they wanted to delay it, and now you can use that signal to recommend them. So there are many insights you can use from data that keep coming from your producer. Once those producers give you that data, there's a stream that gets created. A stream is basically a set of events uh, which now gets published to a broker. Um, and like, like we have the file, concept of the file, you can think of the concept of a topic. A topic is where you put in a specific type of event. A grouped set of events that logically belong in one area is, is a topic, right? Like all clicks go through this topic all uh, uh, checkouts go through this topic, right? So there's topics and then there's events. So a broker is an entity which is some sort of a stream processor or uh, responsible for durability of those events that keep coming in and fault tolerance, right? 
So broker is, is an entity that will it'll take care of consuming and then keeping track of all the events coming in. And there are a set of consumers. There could be alerts, there could be notification system that needs to ping you saying, hey, there's a problem on your website. Oh, hey, there's a, a credit card that we are gonna block and things like that. So there's consumers who consume those events after some processing is done. And this happens in near real time. So it's constantly per event-based processing instead of per batch-based processing. So this is a typical simple diagram of, of what a producer is who produces the event, a broker or a stream processor that takes that event and then puts some logic in top of it to actually make more sense out of what's going on and logically groups them uh, so that each of the consumers, whenever they're ready, asynchronously can get that data from the broker. So that's a, that's a high level. Let's go deeper into what that architecture looks like. Let's say you have users. We're just gonna break this apart into a full full end-to-end -end architecture now. So now we have clients, there could be millions of these clients. Similarly, there could be millions of producers and it could be hundreds of consumers who are consuming this. This is a many-to-many -many mapping. Now you have a lot of users who, you know, typically write, have simplified this, they write to the database a system that is a source of record, right? They write to a persistent database. And this data, now there's a change capture event. Database triggers, if you remember. That was, uh, Afterthought, but think about change capture as some sort of trigger that happens when there is a new insert, a modification, or a deletion, or any change that happens in the data. Then there's a change capture event or a software. In this case, I've taken the example of data bus that LinkedIn uses, a software that monitors all the changes that are happening in this source of truth data store. And then it appends to this, this log-like structure. Let's let's take Kafka as an example, a stream stream processor that acts on top of it or a Kafka broker, right? So let's say this user was saying, hey, I'm gonna update value of X to be A, and then I'm gonna update, and then this client too says, I'm gonna update this to B, right? X to be A and X to be B. So then all it does, it keeps track of when it came in based on uh, who, who wrote first and second, and, let's, and it writes to this read only append log. It writes that, hey, X was set to A on this timestamp at T1. X was set to B at time send T2 and so on and so forth, right? And that is this broker, Kafka broker. And it reads, it, it just, the change capture just keeps writing to this. You can think of this Kafka broker as, as a circular disk-based buffer, right? It is a finite amount of space, it's still very large. Uh, and then when it grows out of that disk capacity, it just has compaction, it removes some of those things and then you start losing events, right? Um, but that's a still, pretty big, large disk-based circular buffer that it keeps writing to at the end, right? And then there are these downstream derived systems. We looked at that in the previous videos, right? You have the data coming in and asynchronously you want to update your index, you want to update your cache, you want to update your data warehouse, and then there's this new entity. Let's take SAMS as an example of a stream processor that works off of Kafka topics that, uh, that the data is being captured from data bus. There's a stream processor. Let's say this one now creates a graph uh, insight as to how X is changing over time. X here could be like the sales volume, right? Let's take sales volume. That uh, how, much, how much did you sell over time? And then let's say every time someone uh, buys something, this gets add, incremented. And now this could be processed by the stream processor across multiple consumer. And a web service could be like projecting that over graph as to how this graph is changing. Right? It could be even the stock transaction as to what does the volume look like and it constantly keeps updating based on new data coming in. And so this, this is a typical state where you have clients producing data, system of record, a data store, change capture data bus, putting that into Kafka, the log-based system. That now is consumed by some sort of stream processor right? Um, that reads that, modifies it, and gives it in a, to the web service to start serving that to the application layer. The application layer could be the website or could be the mobile phone. right? And now that's consumed by various types of users. Let's say this could be the user that detects a fraud, or this is the user that acts on this. This is the user that actually takes business decisions that says, hey, our sales are dropping, or hey, our sales are doing really good. Let's, let's double down. And so, and then there's also search index. There's also this service, web service, can also talk directly to the database to get some of that, and so on and so forth. So this, I've just expanded this into taking some specific examples of let's say this is uh, Oracle, right? Uh, in that case, you would use Golden Gate here, but let's say this is Espresso, then you use Databus, and then Kafka, Samza. This could be Teradata, some sort of a warehouse. This could be um, an index that we use 
This could be a web service. And so typically this is how this, this data is plumbed from the client that produces it to the client that uses it, right? This is the consumer and this is the producer and there's the system in between that uses this data in near real time, right? Uh, and there are many systems like these, right? Um, I, I've used some specific examples like Kafka and Samza um, as, the, as the broker and the stream processor, but there are many such competing systems um, uh, in the market today a lot of them, actually most of these written ones are open source, but there are also propriety ones out there. Uh, and in the in the logs, in the scale of uh, latency versus throughput, Apache Storm is the, is the fastest in terms of latency. Uh, Spark is about hundreds or if not a thousand millisecond or in seconds in terms of latency, but very high throughput. Samza is, is right after Flint uh, is another one. Um, so there, there are various uh, trade-offs. Each of these have different persistent logic. Uh, they have different ways of caching. They have different semantics, how they uh, do micro-batching versus true streaming. Here there's true streaming. Uh, here there's more micro-batching. Um, there's also a new one being introduced. This is Spark streaming. Um, there's also Kafka streaming, which is, you know, uses a lot of what Samza has, right? That's being introduced. So there are multiple choices out there, but in a sense, they're using a different kind of uh, storage. They're using a different types of checkpointing as to how uh, your data, when there's a fault, uh, when let's say a node goes down, how do they replay? How, 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 how much guarantee they provide in terms of uh, delivery? Is it just once delivery? Is it in order delivery? So there are multiple uh, things that we have to look at as to what are the trade-offs? Is it batching truly streaming ways or micro batching or multiple large batching that comes into batch systems, right? Uh, item portent writes, uh, which is like if you do the same operation over and over, it has the same output, doesn't change the output. Uh, checkpointing, we look at how transaction support is provided, fault tolerance. There are multiple ways in which this system can be changed and that's why there are multiple solutions out there. So you want to really understand what are the trade-offs each of these systems uh, that you're potentially planning to use. What are your trade-offs? Right? Let's say you wanted to build a Twitter timeline for the homepage. Right? What would you build? Would you build uh, a, re a runtime search across you know, all your followers for showing your timeline for your home? Probably not. You would probably want to pre-compute and have some sort of a streaming system that uh, uh, every time there's a that your follower or the one you follow adds some uh, tweet that it automatically has it in your pre-computed uh, streaming store, right? So how you define how you, what what is important to you? Th there are multiple solutions out there for it, right? So latency is one factor. Throughput, ordering, like does it provide some sort of back pressure when there's uh, your consumers can't really handle all the data coming in? Does it does it provide for storage or does it just fail over, right? Does it does it tell the producer to produce less? Back pressure support, elasticity. Can it scale up, right? With, even with batch systems, we looked at how do we enable for distributed processing. Similarly, there could be multiple such systems that run on multiple partitions for Kafka, log storage, also multiple Samza nodes. So all of those scaling up is an important aspect and there are multiple trade-offs each one of them would have, right? State management, does it use a file-based, uh, disk-based state management versus memory-based? And there's different trade-offs for that. Um, and what sort of delivery does it does it guarantee? Is it strictly once, or is it at least once? And that has different consequences for your system, right? Um, so how you use it, how you um, use it in your real life system, has much to do with what your requirements are. Right? So this just gives us an overview of how what 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 exists out there, right? But in a sense, you think about this: the new paradigm here, the abstraction here that we are introduced, getting introduced to is the abstraction of notification. Instead of uh, you know, constantly querying the database, now you get notified. That is new. You get notified when something new happens. Right? You don't have to query it. So it's going away from uh, polling the database to getting notified, right? Um, and we expanded on the change capture as to how the DB trigger was an afterthought and how all of the systems now are put in place and it's pretty phenomenal. Think about this. If you have data that you can read and, and, uh, and evolve your application logic, you add some sort of business process here to evolve this so that you can give different viewpoints, 
forget about data schema evolution, right? You don't end up constantly having to change your data. Now you have different views that you can write on top of your system of record. So that's the power and it's also real time. You get near real time, there's, there's bound to be some inaccuracies because if let's say there's a fault and there's ordering issues, uh, but you can compensate that with a batch processing, uh, which does majority of the job in an hourly batch. And then you can have stream on top of it, which gives you some sort of an error, much more uh, real time, but slightly less precise. So how do you build all of the systems together? It's up to you. But multiple views is a pretty uh, big uh, opening that this system provides, right? Where you, for the same data, you can now show it in many different ways, right? Uh, you can A-B test all kinds of data logic that you need and then use what you need uh, and then throw away what you don't need, right? Um, and think about this as um, database just holds the latest source of truth, right? Um, let's say uh, X could be A and X could be B, but whatever is the latest is what database stores. But the log or your, or your stream processor now has access to the entire history, right? Uh, and so when that happens, as I told you earlier, if you knew what were the items in the card, if let's say there were five items and the user only ended up choosing one, now you have insight about four other data items, four other cart items that they probably wanted. Maybe they would buy it later and things like that. Events, those micro actions that happen on your website are very powerful, not only for acting on near real time, but also insights at a later stage or for, for you to work on, right? So this is very powerful, right? We, we went through the architecture at a high level, we went through some examples, some trade-offs, but using the streaming systems is, is, at the end of it, it's gonna come to what are your use cases? How are you gonna build for it? And uh, how, how will you make use of it to actually solve for real business use cases, right? Um, that is important. And what you choose depends highly in terms of what are your trade-offs that you end up uh, making. For your system design. So this was amazing. A lot of a uh, lot of research going on in this area. A lot of companies. Uh, I think Databricks uh, going deep with Spark, uh, Kafka and Confluent uh, going deep with Samza and Kafka, and and I think uh, multiple other companies and universities are doing much more work in this area. Uh, so it's a very powerful concept for us to know in detail as to how the systems work. What are the trade-offs so that we can make the right decision when we choose to use system A versus system B, right? So, thank you.